Hello and welcome to this next video in the chess improvement series, step by step, the intermediate move. Today, we'll be looking at several different positions at different phases of the game where an intermediate move changes everything. Here, white has just played the bishop to g5, and the black player responded with knight b to d7, guarding the knight on f6. White now does some calculating and says, if I capture the pawn on d5 and the pawn captures back, because if the knight captured back, they lose the queen. I might be winning that d5 pawn. White very excitedly plays pawn takes pawn, pawn takes back, and knight takes pawn. And here, black sees an intermediate move coming that will change the outcome of the game, potentially. At least give a strong material advantage. Let's see what happened. Knight takes knight, bishop takes queen, and now the intermediate move. Of course, the natural move is king takes bishop. You'd see this in beginner games, or maybe a fast game where people are just quickly captured, take back. That idea, right? Someone captured my piece, I need to take it back. But with an intermediate move, we would still, even in a position where there's an obvious recapture, we still consider other moves. It's a very strong thing to do in chess. So often, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight takes knight. You know what I mean? Like there's like this like exchange, exchange, capture, 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 capture. And we're so used to, we hear the noise even in the games, right? Because they make that capture sound when things are captured, right? But now there's going to be a check sound. Bishop to b4 check. The intermediate move. And it's with check, so there's less options for white. This makes it easy to calculate. We can picture quickly what's going to happen here. Queen has to come to d2. Bishop takes check. King recaptures. King takes the bishop. We do a quick head count. And we see that black now has three minor pieces to white's two. Fantastic. All by understanding the power of an intermediate move, the power of not capturing back immediately. And let's look at another example. Here we go. The black rook has moved along this rank to the h file to attack the bishop. Again, in many, many games, that bishop would move to a safe square, perhaps here, or maybe here, or maybe even here. And the game would continue. No one would think anything of it. You'd look back at the game, who knows what the outcome is? White wins, black wins, doesn't really matter. But here, there's a beautiful intermediate move. Somewhat obvious if you look at the board for a moment. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can find the intermediate move in this position? What is it? What, is black, what does white do instead? Not move the bishop to one of these squares where it's just safe but doesn't really threaten anything. Instead, what does white do? Pause the video and let me know. Okay, I'm assuming you guys that did actually pause the video this time, and maybe even quickly you saw the idea. It is rook takes bishop. Check. Again, power of a check, right? And the king has kind of limited options here. These squares are all controlled by white's pieces, making this square the only one that's available for the king that doesn't involve capturing the rook. So black goes ahead and captures the rook not wanting to play passively. But here, bishop to g7 check changes everything, right? The king has to move away. Can't threaten a piece in an advantageous way because the rook's already guarded by the king. And the bishop takes the rook. And you might think, what about this check? To separate the king from the rook, well, the bishop guards that checking square. Had to look for that, didn't you? Because that's still a piece that could have gone down, right? That if this check was available, king gets moved away from the rook, Suddenly, everything's maybe going black's way. But nope, that wasn't the case. The ever-important c3 square was protected. What about the next puzzle? Let's look at that one. Another endgame position. And this time, the intermediate move doesn't involve check. It's a move about controlling squares. Can you see it? Do you see the very powerful move that black has available? If not, pause this video and see if you can find it. What is it? What type of intermediate move might exist here? Pause it. Let me know what you guys come up with. Did you find the move? I'm going to tell you in a second, so hopefully you've looked for it. All right. Black desperately wants this pawn on the h-file to queen and, and re realizes there's a beautiful tactical shot to help that pawn queen, the intermediate move of rook to d1. And this time it's about limiting the access of white's pieces to squares. So you might say, well, what's wrong with just king takes rook, pawn moves up, 
And maybe there's the, the rook coming in time. Rook checks, king moves up. Can't, oh, the rook can't get there, right? So that pawn's queening. Okay, so that doesn't work. What about, what about other ideas? What about the king running up here? Nope, no time. King up, pawn up is going to queen. Hmm. <laughs> and of course, if king takes, the pawn comes forward. And again, we've already looked at this. The rook can't get to the pawn in time. So this pawn actually queens. So the idea of rook to d1, it wasn't the idea of like a checkmate or anything like that. It was about winning significant material, limiting white's access to a square, specifically the h2 square. Not able to get over here in time to stop the pawn. Right? It's very important stuff, these intermediate moves. And as you start to put these into your own games, you're going to get more victories. And where, where does the intermediate move come from? Well, it comes from thinking differently. In this case, you moved a piece to a protected square. D1 was protected by the king, but there was an understanding that moving to this protected square allowed this pawn to queen. No way to stop it anymore. What is white to do, right? So go ahead, in your next games as you're playing, especially longer games, it's harder in blitz to find these, but in longer games, 15 and 15, maybe even a 10 minute rapid game, you have that extra 30 seconds, a minute, whatever it is to think about, what if I don't just recapture the piece? What if I don't just retreat the threatened piece? And these types of thoughts are going to get you guys wonderful results. And you're going to walk away from games feeling really inspired and excited about chess again. Do you play games and then afterwards you pull out an engine or you do some analysis and you're like, oh, oh, why didn't I see that? Well, oftentimes the reason you didn't see it is because you made the obvious recapture. You made the obvious retreat and you didn't look for the intermediate move. We'll see you guys next time.